Hello everyone and welcome to the Movie Fanatics. My name is Brennick. I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. It's not scary per se, but it is thrilling for a while and then very disturbing by the end with the infamous dinner scene. It's a movie I have a lot of respect and appreciation for, and I'm glad it was allowed to remain a little independent movie that never got a sequel. Haha. <laughs> yes, Texas Chainsaw went down the path of some other horror franchises, and by that I mean it wouldn't end. Just like Halloween, this series has gone through sequels, reboots, retcons, and readjusted timelines, and it's a mess. If you need me to put it into perspective, this franchise includes movies like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Texas Chainsaw, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I haven't seen any other follow-ups to the original movie, and I'm also not watching any of the sequels to Halloween or any of the other Fridays or anything of the sort. But one day I was scrolling through my YouTube recommendations, and a trailer popped up for a sequel, remake, reboot, whatever. It was a new Texas Chainsaw movie. Alright. I watched the trailer, and the movie didn't look great, but it was on Netflix, so then and there I knew I would watch it. Turns out it was coming out the very next day after I first saw the trailer. I watched it and the trailer wasn't lying. The movie was pretty bad. Let's talk about it. Right off the bat, Texas Chainsaw Massacre annoys me because, as you'd expect, we meet the characters in the beginning. The characters in this movie. Dear God, it feels like they went out of their way to make them as annoying as possible. The movie starts off with these characters at a gas station. Our cast is Lila, Melody, Dante, and... Dante's fiance. Does she have a name? The gas station they're at is selling little trinkets based on the Chainsaw Massacre. The events of the first movie in this universe are real, so I guess they're just selling trinkets and merchandise based off of an actual mass murder. That's weird. Imagine if in our world they sold t-shirts with Ted Bundy on them. But anyway, the characters immediately harass a guy for having a gun and driving a truck. This is Richter, and he's my favorite character in the movie, because he's almost always in the right, even though the movie wants you to think he's wrong. Like, he didn't do anything in this first scene, he was just getting gas, leave my boy alone. It is very important to make your characters likable in a horror movie. That way we sympathize with them and we feel bad for them when they die. And the deaths hit harder when we like them. That might seem hypocritical of me to say because the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre also had bad characters, but the difference is that those characters were just underdeveloped and really didn't have character traits. That's still a problem, but boring characters are not nearly as bad as irritating characters. These characters suck because they're irritating and are in the wrong, especially when they kick the old lady out of the house later. Dante's fiance is alright, I don't really like Dante too much, but the sisters. Oh god, the sisters. I'm sure all the actors are lovely people in real life. It's not their problem that their characters are like this, but I just can't stand them. But anyway, these clowns are trying to renovate this old ghost town called Harlow. The town has a population of 1974, and that's a cute reference to the year the first movie came out. They're checking the town out and they find an old orphanage where there is a lady. They kick her out because they think they own the house even though she claims to. And then a very big man appears at the top of the stairs. And yes, that's Leatherface, I guess. Okay, I haven't seen any Texas Chainsaw movies besides the first, but this one disregards the entire canon except the first one and is a direct sequel to the first one. So I don't really need to see the other ones to answer this question. Why is Leatherface here? I guess you're supposed to infer that Leatherface left the family home and went to this orphanage at some point after the events of the first movie. But that's never explained, and for a movie that worships the first movie so much, this seems like a kind of big plot point to leave unanswered. Whatever, I guess, because Leatherface gets into the police car with his new and dying mommy, and Dante's fiance goes along too. This is because the writers needed to kill her, so they send her off to die. But it goes about as well as expected. Mommy dies, Leatherface cries, and when I say cries, I mean breaks a cop's arm and stabs him with his own broken bone. What? I think when I first watched this moment, I was slightly zoned out because I remember I blinked once, said what, and then rewinded it a little bit to see what had actually happened. The dying cop wrestles Leatherface and his gun goes off and very conveniently shoots the cop that's driving. The car crashes and I actually like the next scene a lot. There's this really suspenseful scene where Dante's fiance is trying to call for help or escape while Leatherface cuts off Mommy's face at the back of the car. This scene is tense and creative, and that's what I like about it. It's one of the few scenes that actually worked for me. Leatherface has donned Mommy's face by this point, and after killing Dante's fiance, he hobbles towards Harlow. Then Sally from the first movie is introduced. I'll have more to say on this later, but for now I'll say that they're trying to do a Halloween 2018 type thing where the final girl from the first movie comes back to try and kill the killer. The difference is that Laurie Strode is an actual character. No one cares about Sally. I love the original. I don't even care about her that much. Almost any of the other characters could have been the lone survivor and the movie would have barely changed. Dante and Melody are concerned because Mommy died and Richter takes their keys. Richter says he'll return the keys when they prove that they own the house that they kicked Mommy out of. And Dante can't find it. They search the house and realize that they didn't own it. 
Look at Richter, just standing up for his neighbors. What a guy. While they're searching the house, Leatherface shows up and kills Dante. I actually really dig the way they shoot this, with the swinging door showing the action in a creative way. Melody walks down the stairs and absolutely does not care that she's watching her friend bleed out while his killer stands over him. <laughs> she's just like... Oh. I actually like the next scene as well. When the movie does tension, it actually does it not half bad. I wish it had more of that, but unfortunately it turns into a mindless gore fest later. But the scenes where Melody is hiding in Leatherface's room are pretty suspenseful. I just wish the movie had more of this kind of stuff. Now, despite being dead, Dante decides to be alive again, and he hobbles into the street where he's noticed by Richter and the bank lady. This is funny because the writers obviously needed the other characters to realize somehow that there was a killer, so they decide to have the dead guy walk out into the street, get seen, and then die. And my main man, Richter, consoles Dante in his final moments. What a guy. Richter goes to the orphanage to see what's what, finds Leatherface, and dies. <gasps> no! Oh, Richter, my man. Melody takes the opportunity to escape, crawls over the banister, what was that about? And bumps into Leatherface. If you will not fight, then you will meet your destiny. This scene is funny because, and this is a nitpick, anytime the chainsaw goes under the floor where Melody is hiding, it's loud and sounds like a chainsaw, but anytime it's not, it's completely silent. That's not how chainsaws work. They don't go silent just to create suspense. I honestly think it would be better if you could hear it rumbling from above the whole time. I also think Melody scooting away from the chainsaw as it chases after her is the goofiest thing ever. But Lila finds Melody, helps her escape, and they go to the bus. For some reason, the bank lady didn't tell anyone there was a killer out there. Seems like an important detail to me. Then there's the simply incredible bus scene which is sarcastic because the scene was very disappointing. The idea of the killer being in a tight enclosed space with a bunch of people is a really good one. But there's this awful shaky cam and the lighting is all blue and weird and it's just a big gore fest, so I didn't like the scene. Even if it does start with the best line of all time. Try anything and you cancel, bro. <laughs> yeah, that'll stop him. So Leatherface just cuts through the crowd and I can feel my mind becoming numb. I'm not a person who's bothered by gore, but it also doesn't scare me. So that's why these kills didn't work for me. But the kills in the original really made my skin crawl. There's not much gore shown, and that's way better. When your mind is left to fill in the blanks, it's so much more effective. But when someone is just cut in half and their intestines flop to the ground, that's just gross, not scary. Lila and Melody are in the back of the bus in the bathroom, and oh, oh, this looks familiar. I wonder if this was intentional. Leatherface, I swear to God. Leatherface. Oh my God, guys, I remember The Shining, stop. After that migraine, Lila and Melody bump into Sally, who is still in the movie. She locks him in her car and then goes to confront Leatherface. She walks into his room and goes like, Do you remember me? And Leatherface just walks past her. Why didn't you shoot him? I mean, it wouldn't have worked. Leatherface just refuses to die in this movie. Which is another problem I have. This movie demonstrates a fundamental misunderstanding about the character of Leatherface from the original. He's not like Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees. He's not supposed to be indestructible or impossible to kill. He's just some guy. He's still scary, but he's not invincible. He's a goon, and it's scary because he's insane and unpredictable, but he's not impervious to damage. So Leatherface tries to break into the car that the sisters are in, but he gets shot by Sally a couple times. <laughs> Remember me now? I'm the one who got away. And I'm here to make sure you don't, motherfucker. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Sally decides that now is a good time to let the sisters drive away instead of keeping them there as bait. Glad you finally figured that out, Sally. Now I really don't understand why you're keeping these two as bait. I mean, you had your chance to kill Leatherface, but you wanted him to say your name. What's your angle? And now we've arrived at the funniest chunk of the movie, the wacky finale, and it opens with the funniest scene because it was very shocking. Sally's death scene. This movie's first mistake was assuming that Sally was a character that people actually cared about, which they don't, but she has a very minimal role in the story, despite the marketing implying that she'd be the main character. But for a movie that is so reverent of the first film and its final girl, Sally gets killed in the most unceremonious way possible. She gets stabbed by the chainsaw, lifted into the air and destroyed, and then thrown into the trash. Cool. And again, I don't care about Sally, but the movie does, so why does it kill her off in the most disrespectful way possible? So the sisters try to drive into Leatherface, but Leatherface does a good old-fashioned gamer move and throws his chainsaw at the car, causing it to crash. Nothing can stop my lightsaber. 
Melody is trapped in the wreckage and tells Lila to run. It's supposed to be this big emotional moment. But I don't care about these characters, so I don't care about this scene. So as Lila is leaving her sister to die, Sally, despite being dead, decides to be alive again and shoots Leatherface a couple of times. Then she says to Lila that she shouldn't run because Leatherface will never stop haunting her. But he killed your friends and then he left his family to go hang out at an orphanage for decades, so he's not like actively tracking you down. I guess she means like PTSD? I don't know, man. She gives Lila the shotgun and then Lila runs into the building that Leatherface is in. He tackles her and they fall into this big old pool of water that's in the floor for some reason. Then I guess Lila overpowers this refrigerator-sized man because she gets out of the pool of water. But Leatherface is right on her tail. This is lame. What is with this dude in throwing his weapons? But it looks like Lila loses until Melody jumps on Leatherface's back in very cheesy slow-mo. Then, this movie thinks it's being so cool when Melody picks up the chainsaw and very dramatically hits Leatherface in the face with it. And Leatherface falls into the water and is dead and is definitely not still alive. Lila then finds Sally's discarded hat and puts it on, which is very strange because Sally has no connection to Lila and Lila has no connection to Sally. This is like the end of Rise of Skywalker where Rey calls herself Rey Skywalker. She only does this because of the audience's connection to the name and not her own character's connection to the name. Luke Skywalker is a beloved character to the audience, but to Rey, he's some old guy who yelled at her, hardly her mentor. If she was to say any name here, she should have said Organa, because she actually did have a relationship with Leia. But that wouldn't have pleased the audience enough. Although I guess Rey Skywalker didn't either. The same is true here. Sally has a connection to the audience, well, she's supposed to, but to Lila, she's some old lady who yelled at her, locked her in a car, and used her as bait for Leatherface. But the movie ends in brilliantly stupid fashion as Leatherface, despite being dead, decides to be alive again. And he rips Melody out of the car with a jump scare and decapitates her. Now, they were trying to mirror the ending from the original, so Lila screams while looking towards the back of the car and Leatherface swings the chainsaw. But it's really funny because instead of being in the back of a pickup truck, Lila's poking out of the top of the car. And in order to make it move, they made the car a Tesla that's on autopilot. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> and this whole scene feels more like a parody than a reference to the original's ending. I love that in the original, there's no falling action. Sally escapes the house, gets chased by a hitchhiker and Leatherface, and then she gets away, and Leatherface swings the chainsaw. That abrupt cut to black is so chilling and so awesome. I love that the movie doesn't give the audience a second to breathe. And that cut to black is a hundred times more effective after you've just watched the whole movie instead of just watching the scene on its own. This movie has a big final battle, two seconds of falling action, and then a big, dumb Friday the 13th jump scare ending. It feels wrong. But I guess they needed to establish the fact that Leatherface is still alive, and in the end credit scene, he goes back to the original house. So I guess they're gonna make a sequel. Thank God, that's all I've ever wanted. Home Invasion? Michael? Yeah? It's Michael from the Three Men and a Mic podcast. Yeah. You're here. Yeah. Did you just finish a movie? Yeah. It's called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, awesome. I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, no, not the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's just Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's the new one. Oh. Did someone say Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Where did you- I just watched it last night! Do you have opinions about it? Yeah. Well, come sit down. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Do the intro! I already did the intro at the start of the video. That's what the right. whole schedule uh, is. Yeah, 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 remember yeah, yeah. the I'm whole sorry. schedule. Just go, 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 go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry. It's actually Texas Chainsaw Massacre that we all watch. And yes, we did. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you forgot. I forgot. Uh, I just... forgot. <laughs> we we have we have thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. We're gonna tell us. We're gonna tell you the thoughts. I think. Brannock's wearing a shirt that blends with the couch. <laughs> he really does. He really I'm does. Camouflaged. <laughs> Anyways, um, um, so who wants to go first? Michael, what were your thoughts? Did you see the trailer? The trailer? Yeah, what were your I thoughts think on the trailer? I think we all did the trailer. What are your thoughts did going I see in? the trailer? Going in, I was like, I didn't know much about it. I've been told by you that it was an interesting movie. 
You said like it wasn't that great, so I, I had low expectations, and I think my expectations were still too high. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Braden? Well, I saw the trailer, I think, once or twice, and I'm not a huge fan of the franchise, but I thought the movie was average to bland at best. Hmm. I watched the trailer the day before the movie came out, and I, I am a big fan of the original movie, and I haven't seen any of the sequels, but I guess it doesn't matter, since this one, like, wipes the canon away. It pulls of Halloween. It retcons everything right. except the original. But I was but it, thoroughly disappointed. But <laughs> Halloween did it well. Yeah. Yes, yes it did. It did do it well. I still haven't seen it. It doesn't matter. The, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Chance Texas this isn't a Halloween review. I'm sorry. It's, it's just a better Texas movie. Yeah. Um, I probably had more fun watching this one than Halloween, though. Oh my god, this is a very funny movie. <laughs> it's a really I was funny laughing movie. like most if, of the time. If you're okay with gore, uh -huh. then it's basically a comedy. It yeah. is really much a comedy. And it's not like a horror comedy. I think there's it's one just, sequence that it's legitimately scary, but for the rest of the movie, it's just hilarious. Which one? Uh, the, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, carnage on the bus. That's uh, like the one scene that's like actually terrifying. I agree. I wouldn't say terrifying. It's just <laughs> scary. I'd say it's disturbing. Yeah. I was disturbed. I wasn't necessarily like scared, but yeah. I, I was disturbed while watching that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess that, that scene was just kind of a lot, but I think yeah. the other two scenes that I actually did think were like even like a little good were mm -hmm. the ones that the one where Dante's wife or fiance or whatever is like in the car after it crashes and Leatherface oh, is yeah, like the behind it scene or whatever yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> the van sorry the yeah van. the van um yeah I think that one was good. I like that you could like mm -hmm. you could kind of see where Leatherface was, mm -hmm. but then he, like drags the body away. And now it's you don't the know sound in that scene that was yeah. creepy. Yeah, no music. I was quiet. And the other one was the one where um, Melody was under the bed. I thought that one was pretty. Successful Is it too. Melanie or Melody? I think it's like, Melody. Melody. Okay. Oh yeah. So we should probably for those of you that haven't seen it, spoilers first yes. of all. <laughs> yeah, oh, that was at, that was at the beginning of the video. Yeah, spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Alert. If they made it this far, that's their own fault. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> yeah, and then second, should we like explain? Like a quick explanation of the plot or something. Yeah, no. who wants to do no. that? No, 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 I did that. I, just, it's I a did, trailer. I just did that a couple seconds right. ago. But oh, okay, so yeah, Brandon, I've already, I've already reviewed. Yeah, this. I'm gonna like let you guys talk for me. So, of I there was, I honestly really enjoyed the movie up until the carnage on the bus, and then from after that scene to the rest of the movie, it fell apart so fast. Like I felt it was like a pretty enjoyable slasher movie and then after that the movie completely just fell apart and i was just like okay <laughs> I'd say let's like, turn it off now i'd say like enjoyable and good are different because i definitely enjoyed the yeah movie. no right. i mean i'm not I mean, saying it, i wouldn't say it was good no it, it's definitely not a good movie it's a, yeah. a fun turn your brain off movie yeah, I think no. It's not like a, like a horror comedy. Like when we say yeah. it's funny, it's not like a, it's not trying to be funny. But yeah, it's trying to be serious and it's not working. But there are a couple jokes that that are meant to be funny though. Are there? Are there? I think I think there's like one joke in the movie that was like actually funny. Which but one? I can't think of it, but, but but there was definitely one joke that was probably funny. I assume there. Was, I was I was laughing. I don't think I was supposed to. Be. <laughs> I was laughing. Just but I times. I just want to talk about how. It, it totally takes off of, ha of Halloween 2018. I'm going to mention it again. Mm -hmm. But it's the same exact story, c copy and pasted, about the original character 40 some odd years later haunting some, huh, some justice. It's the same thing. Yeah, but like nobody cares about Sally. Yeah, it? it's done worse. And plus, yeah. it's not the um, same actress either. It's a, it's a different actress. Yeah. Thing is, okay, so how much did you talk about in the review? Because, like, how much can we get into here? Yeah. As much as you want. All Perfect. right. I think, so you, we were just talking about, like, Sally, how they brought her back. But the thing is, with Halloween, and we're going to compare it to a lot because they're very similar in, like, like, what they, they tried to do. Yeah. But, like, with Leather, with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, with, or with Halloween, they did a lot with Laurie Strode, like, in mm -hmm. the new one. They, like, made her kind of, like, the hero, but mm -hmm. then also, like, added characters. With this, they tried to bring Sally back. But in a bad way. For part for five that, minutes. Of screen. Then they like kill her immediately. <laughs> they, <laughs> they bring her back to kill. They her. say like, first of all, her whole part is like dumb. She's like, all right, I'm gonna use you guys as bait. <laughs> I, I thought then, that was funny. Not gonna lie. And then she's like, all right, now we're gonna. And then she gets impaled, and <laughs> the, and the girls just watch. <laughs> Can we <laughs> talk about it? Watch as she gets impaled. Can we talk about in this movie how it's Dante and then it's Sally. 
they get injured and they're alive for like 10 more minutes. And like with yeah. Dante, yeah. it's like, okay, Dante's killing reveal is actually cool. But Sally gets chomped to death with a chainsaw and is still alive for 10 minutes. Yeah, she gets like... She gets lifted up <laughs> off the ground and her like insides get like mulched and thrown in the garbage and she's that was, it's literally yeah it's like a metaphor it's like it's like no one cared about that character so into the garbage she, she goes yeah they also just won't let her die yeah, honestly she, she just doesn't die i mean she does <laughs> well eventually. she does but eventually like, but it's yeah. after a while after like she can after the one main character there are two like melody and lila lila yeah lila yeah. so lila. she's like so lila like gets away and she's like running away from leatherface and right as Leatherface is about to kill her, Sally, like, shoots her. Mm -hmm. And this is after she's been impaled. So, <laughs> like, bleeding to death. Yeah, after she's been, like, stabbed through with a chainsaw. All the way through. All the way through. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I don't know. And, but she has, like, enough energy to, like, shoot him. And then, with the uh, friggin', like, reload the gun and throw it to her. Honestly, <laughs> but I, I think it's funnier with, like, Dante gets injured, like, 25 minutes. and then And then you see him, like... 30 minutes later, and you forget about him. It's probably you not 30, but... Yeah. But it's really long time after, and you forget about that character completely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you think... Because the thing is, you think he's dead. Yeah. But then he's just like... Then he's... It, like, randomly, it just cuts to him, and he's, like, up and kicking, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what is Jaws, like, hanging off? He, he's, yeah. he's just walking down the street. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I want to I wanna talk Maybe. about... <laughs> probably the... Other than the bus scene, like, the best scene in the movie is when... Dante's wife to be is what he calls her. Uh, it crashes in that van, and the build up to that scene I think is done all awesomely. Like I think it's probably the it's the best scene in the movie. I would just like to say that the new word for fiance is wife to be. <laughs> well, but that's what he, he calls her in the movie is is, is wife to be. Yeah, there's a word for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also. Uh. Can we talk about the ending? Please. Yes, so, absolutely. Uh -huh. The ending is like... I feel like there's little structure to this video. You know? There is not. There's, there's, not, there's like one fun. act. It's just one act. We're having, We're having a fun. great time. So, the ending of this movie was like... I'm just going to quickly like go through it, even though you probably already did that. Yeah, I did. I, I, what I did for my part was I kind of like went through the events of the movie and commented on individual aspects. Well, well then... Fun. You all can hear it again. <laughs> so, I'll just say it again. Just like a quick, so like, yeah. So as you as you heard, Melody <laughs> like, Melody like kills leather kills Leatherface, and then uh, they like as they think they won, they're like walking out to the car. Lila like has the hat on, he's holding the picture. <laughs> we we'll talk about that, that later. <laughs> he's holding the picture that makes no sense because where did she get that picture? Like where did Sally get that picture? I don't know. Uh, they get in their Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it's a knockoff Tesla. They get, okay, wait, we can get, hold on. Okay, so <laughs> they, they, get, they get in their Tesla, uh, <laughs> pop open the sunroof, start, uh, probably like cranking music, who knows. Uh, autopilot. Hit the autopilot. <laughs> they're driving away, they're telling jokes, and then boom, there's Leatherface. Pulls Melody out of the car, decapitates her, and then she like, you know, to recreate the, fi the famous final shot of the original movie, where she's like in the back of the pickup truck, like cheering mm -hmm. because she made cheering, it out. Well, but... like happy because she made it out. And mm -hmm. then like Leatherface all mad, swinging the chainsaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because he's like, he got her, she got away. They recreate that by having her <laughs> stick out of the sunroof of the, of the self driving <laughs> Tesla, <laughs> screaming out of fear this time, or sadness this time. I thought it was going to crash. Like Leatherface that. got her sister, and then. Leatherface starts like swinging around the chainsaw again, but now with another head in his hand. <laughs> yeah. But one thing about the original ending that I that I personally and I think most people like mm -hmm. is that it's so creepy the way they just kind of like cut to black as he's like mm -hmm. mid like chainsaw dance. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. yeah but like they're mid chainsaw dance or he's mid chainsaw dance, and then it cuts to black. Mm -hmm. The thing with this one though, they could have totally recreated that. It would have taken like nothing away from the movie. It probably would have added a little bit to it. But instead, they made, tried to make, like, an effect where he, like, cuts the screen open with a with the chainsaw, and then it goes to credits. And, like, that's such a little thing mm -hmm. that I think cool. took away, like, just took a little bit away from the movie. Yeah. Can I just talk about how um, when Sally dies, they crash into that 
like the garage or whatever, like right. of that guy. Is it Richter? Is his name maybe? Richter is my favorite. Richter, yeah, it's a bet. It's, <laughs> it's definitely. Um, but they crash into that, and she, he gets like a piece, like pedal, like it, in her leg. And then at the end of the movie, I don't think she's even limping. I think she's just strolling on out to the car. Yeah, she's, like, strong enough to get on Leatherface's back and then, like, uppercut him with the chainsaw. On <laughs> his <laughs> face, which I don't know how he lives. His leather? That's a whole other thing. Yeah. <laughs> Throughout the movie, they, like, all the characters take, things. like, a bunch of hits and just don't go down. <laughs> Sally, the, the biggest. Yeah. Sally gets impaled. Dante gets, like, his face cut off, basically. <laughs> Leatherface is, like... Leatherface gets shot, shot, like, 20 times <laughs> and stabbed with a chainsaw in his face. I, uh, I, Melody I, gets, like, impaled through the leg. It's Lila right. gets a chainsaw kind of, like, bowled at her. <laughs> I love that, <laughs> that shot of the so movie funny. where Leatherface just wraps it up and just goes bowling. Oh, also... Richter. One thing, so, like, in the pool for that was in the movie, you know, the movie theater pool. Like, <laughs> just the classic pit of movie water. theater pool. So, like... Leatherface tricks Lila into like, cause he like sets up the chainsaw, makes it like start and it might like start the sound and she like walks towards it. Mm -hmm. And then he, he like, he opens it and the chainsaw's there, but he's not. And then she gets tackled into the pool by Leatherface. Cage dive. <laughs> yeah, like that. So <laughs> then she climbs out of the pool unscathed. Like completely unscathed. Leatherface apparently cannot keep her underwater. <laughs> Long I love that. She's like this huge guy. <laughs> She's like small. He's like six foot twenty. <laughs> Three hundred pounds, probably. Yeah, bodybuilder. She's like small. Like small. <laughs> Just small. Doesn't add up. <laughs> but she's, add up. she is strong enough to escape Leatherface. Well, I mean, no explanation. We just assume that, like, obviously she just gave. Also, of course. Melody spends the majority of the movie not even in the movie. Like, she's like, I'm, I, I think it's a closet first, and then she's under the bed. Like, she's like absent from I mean, like for like a twenty minutes of the movie. Basically, I think and <laughs> and the and the funniest thing is, is Leatherface has to break a wall to get his chainsaw. Yeah, I, I, don't, know, I don't know where that was. <laughs> I mean, it was so funny. I was like, why is he just angry, just beating a wall? Yeah, like, when I first watched the movie, that completely, like, I don't know where I was. I think I zoned out because I, like, when me and Michael talked about it after he saw it, he, like, mentioned that part, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's why he was banging the wall. I remember I was thinking, why did he do that? And I guess I, like, fell asleep and then woke up and he had the chainsaw because I don't remember him, like, grabbing it. Also, Richter is, okay, I think he, blah, 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 blah. I think he is the best developed character in the movie. I think so. Oh, he's the only one who's, like, not annoying. And yeah. his, his final stand, I love, like, the, that, like, mirror thing. You guys, he, like, like, turns the mirror and, and he sees um, mm -hmm. stuff in the corner. Stuff in the corner. Anyway. Leather but the corner. He, he doesn't really get a shot off, but he gets his leg, like, broken. Yeah. Like, it's not even, like, partial. No, he gets his leg, like, all the yeah, way like, backwards. Went, like, the wrong way. And it's, like, it's like a right angle. <laughs> but then he but fights. Like the wrong way. <laughs> but he puts up a it's fight. wrong angle. But, but he puts up a fight. The man puts up a fight, though. Yeah. Rick yeah. Cool. And, and then, then he gets his face smashed in. Like, 20 times. <laughs> He, Leatherface keys. just will not stop. Yeah, but he's able to give the keys. Okay, that was another thing that they could have solved. Like, when they found Tante just stumbling out on the street. He, he, he clearly saw him, and he could have just gave them their keys and said, let's all escape. And they none of them would have else died except Dante. But no. I didn't even think of that. They could He could have just given the keys he, then. And, be and like, they all drove away. Now. Yeah, you yeah. guys go now. I'll take care of I it. Guess he was trying to, or just, sense. like, Melody all, would die. All, but, I mean, all, just, like, everyone else this game. Did they, like, have a pickup truck? He could have, like, taken yeah. I think they yeah, took yeah, that out well, yeah, right. when they crashed into his garage. I think they uh, took it out of commission. Yeah, that probably makes sense. Which yeah. is another thing. How do they survive? That would make it so Richter and Melody would die, but all the other characters would live. Yeah. But it would also take away one of, like, the best scenes in the movie. So. But if it was at Tante's death, then they could have all escaped except Tante. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot There's of... There's a little, like, <laughs> things in this movie that just don't make sense. There yeah. are a lot of flaws. Like, the whole... Okay. We, we kind of, like, went over the ending, but mm -hmm. we didn't, like... I have I thoughts about it. the ending. Me too. So, I thought the way they did it with, like... I like the surprise of it, where it's, like... Like, I like that they didn't leave us wondering, like, 
is there gonna be a sequel with it because Leatherface is dead? Like they mm-hmm. like it still kind of does that yeah. with the end credit scene, but like we're not wonder we're not left to wonder like did Leatherface die or like did he make no, it out? Yeah, no, 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 no. But like I like the surprise of just kind of like him showing up and like getting her, like pulling yeah. her out of the car. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. But the actual ending is dumb. Like it's very dumb. There is no reason for that to happen, mm-hmm. and also I don't know. It's just like. Cause then you think about what what about like after the camera cuts and she's like does Lila just have to like drive home I guess and like she's like well that happened <laughs> well, all right <laughs> I want to talk about that because yeah. there's a mid credit scene where it shows him going back to the like OG house mm-hmm. which begs the question so if this is a direct sequel to the original so after <laughs> it's like chainsaw dance did, did he get lost and just walked to the town and never went back to his house like it doesn't make any sense i think like the implication is that like at some point he left i, I guess when everyone else died and he just left i guess he just like and now he wants to go back went to like the orphanage the thing is though like that also raises a bunch of questions it does in the original like there are two other main villains the cook and the hitchhiker no uh, and three the, the grandpa if we count the grandpa <laughs> brother as well because it's the yeah, the hitchhiker, the hitchhiker and, and his brother yeah the cook <laughs> oh it's oh it's the same character yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so, the cook is like so the hitchhiker dies he gets run over by like an 18 wheeler oh yeah but that's right the cook does not die no but he fails to trade in this movie which is like anyway but it's like so he's not in this movie mm-hmm. and you can be like well it's like 15 it's not 15 it's like 50 years later he probably died mm-hmm. but if we use that logic how is Leatherface <laughs> still up and kicking yeah it's how, not like, how is he still running around like killing all these kids yeah if he was like tw- which he's like probably like in his 30s but if he was like 20 in the first one mm-hmm. that means he's 70 <laughs> yeah and uh, I haven't seen any 70 year old no. <laughs> running around with a chainsaw or Michael like Ma- Myers kind of, yeah, <laughs> another but, Michael Myers reference I mean, the thing like, with like Michael Myers though is that he's like a mortal he's kind he's of like yeah, a he's monster built, he's, too. no he's not he's like a of, person though yeah he's like a monster he's the body kind of evil right he's like a supernatural yeah. being and even but if still a person yeah and even if this movie like wants to make Leatherface into this like Jason you, you Voorhees can. like indestructible thing the kind of the thing that made Leatherface like scary was that he was kind of like a person, but he was also kind of like a goofball. Like he was a scary goofball. Yeah. yeah. But he was and, a nut job. And also, like, there's a certain point in the movie where it turns from Leatherface to Jason Voorhees because Leatherface, as I recall in the past movies, Leatherface doesn't set traps. I mean, he runs more and he chases people because he's like a scared animal. He's not like a strategic like no. character. No. And he's, and he's very clumsy. Like, He's just yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's like, like his, yeah. that's his whole thing is that he's crazy but, and like, but, uh, a cannibal. But, but not he's not smart enough to yeah. like set traps. Yeah. Well, actually, you brought this up the other night. He's te- Where technically was they never, I? technically they never mentioned that he's a cannibal in the original. I don't no. think so. We just can kind of assume that that's he is. The, that's like the, the whole dinner scene. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that scene. But um, it's just man. it's an it's an uneven movie. If at best it's bland, and at worst it's so stupid that you really don't care anymore <laughs> who's the orphanage lady they say it's his mom and no it's just like stepmom it's, it's or not, something it's, not it's like his like mom. adopted like, mom we can assume it's not his actual mom but like they refer to her as his mom i think so yeah. like when she's like when melody's like in the car dying she's like i'm sorry we killed your mom okay <laughs> that whole scene in the, that van with our sheriff and his friend or whatever none of them would they would have all been fine if the, the, the deputy didn't stop other face from saving his mom if the deputy just sat back they would have all been fine yeah. No one would yeah. ha- 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 have even died. That was a very convenient gunshot. <laughs> that that was. was. Oh, the first kill of the movie is the dumbest kill of the movie. <laughs> okay. No, it's the, the hand is cool though. When he what? And back, <laughs> the hand and he stabbed the no, guy. But it's so dumb. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. It's, it's fun, but it's dumb. It, it's very <laughs> dumb. He snaps the hand the, in half and stabs him cool, with though. the hand. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> The bone of the hand, sorry. Yeah. Still. <laughs> it's like, dumb, but it's fine. And then weird. somehow a gun goes off and shoots the other cop. Through leaving, his leaving, neck. like I, I want to say Ruth. I think that's her name. I don't know. Leaving her, like, yeah. vulnerable. But, like, I don't know. <laughs> also, they crash <laughs> into, like, a corn combine. How are they, al- ha- like, that 
the thing is like twice as strong as a car. Like, like the, 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 they should all be dead. The, the, like this, well, this movie is full of characters that should be dead. Yeah, yeah. the main characters. I think Everyone we, should be dead. I think we need to drop that point by yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> let's just say all the characters have died. They're all ghosts. <laughs> They're all dead. <laughs> One of them like got, two of them got like killed by a chainsaw. Lila and Sally. Let's just say they all got killed by. Sally chainsaw. gets like killed. Yeah. Or Melody. Sally's or no, because Lila. Lila gets like Lila? the chainsaw thrown at her or bowled at her. <laughs> I love the. That's gonna, oh yeah, so Melody be, be well, a meme now. now. That's well, gonna be a meme. Well, yeah, it's the bowl Melody, like, actually dies, yeah. Melody actually dies, but she probably should have died when she got impaled, or like when she like tried to in the leg. Like, she was tackled. Yeah, yeah. Or when she was like tackling Leatherface after being mm-hmm. impaled. Yeah, yeah. that uh, was that was cool. A lot of characters got impaled we, in this movie. Can we talk mm-hmm. about? the bus scene again because I don't think we you know kind of like talk about it a little, like enough oh okay um, so one thing that we haven't touched on yet about the bus scene it's fine uh, <laughs> the title of this video refers to it oh, oh yeah oh, it does <laughs> try anything cancel bro try anything you're canceled, you're canceled bro. bro but the most the best terrible line of the movie no, yes. no 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 the best line the, the best, <laughs> the best line. line ever <laughs> but the most terrifying death in that scene is when the one lady is it Catherine who, who tries to crawl out. I don't know the bank lady. <laughs> yeah, the bank I lady. I call her like the tour. She guy. gets like the half. Guy. Yeah, she gets like like I think it's like like almost out of the window, and Leatherface just cuts her in half. And oh, that was the, they're like oh, like intestines that like oh, fall out. That, that was, was the one shot that that. that but I was like, ugh. Oh my god, yeah. I, 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 I don't even mind gore. Me really either. Me, but that, that like, made me go like, oh. But it's like, because it's like, when you think of gore, you don't think of, like, guts. You think of blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like, there's, so like, quick, too. I don't need to think of other stuff in people if it's not blood. It wasn't, Honestly. like, a good, uh, though. Like, the first movie, like, the meat hook scene made me go like, uh, but it was still, like, a good, that was a good moment. Yeah. This is just, like, gross. It's just <laughs> disgusting. It's just yucky. And I kind of so thought she was going to escape, though. I was, Me too. I, too. I was like, oh, she's going to get out, and then the chainsaw comes no. down. It was like, quick. Oh, and that. can we talk about how fast the freaking chainsaw is in this movie? It keeps turning off. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, like, it, it does keep turning this off. This is something I noticed on the second watch through and not on the first. Like, you know the scene where she's, like, under the floorboards? Yeah. The, the chainsaw. Keeps, the chainsaw keeps like, turning off. Yeah, it goes down, it's loud, then it goes back up, and then it's just, like, it's silence. Which it's is not how pipe. chainsaws work. And it's the poop pipe. Oh, that was gross, It was too. just disgusting. Oh, There's so many gross yeah. moments I in didn't need, like, the contents of, like, the septic. Like, <laughs> and after. how old is that house? Like, four years? <laughs> no, it's, like, 40 years old. Yeah, bro. It's like, what is it? He's, he had to go there, like, he probably was there after the events of the first one, and that would have been, like, 50 years ago. Yeah. So but, about 50. Pretty old. No, wait, because he was, like, that was the orphanage, and he was there when he was, like, a kid. Yeah. No, was he? <laughs> Love that's, like, that's Melody. The, the picture oh, of, like, all the orphans, and then his face is crossed out. That's Hell, him, right? That's not yes. just some random kid. No, it's, no, no, it's him. That would be funny if it was just some <laughs> dude. <laughs> but Melody tries to escape, and she gets pretty close. And freaking... Uh, other face knocks her down the stairs as he falls to the floorboard. That was funny. That it was, was hilarious funny. because I'm like, how weak are the floorboards? Leatherface just teleports there. She like she thinks she made it out after jumping off the staircase, and then mm-hmm. boom, Leatherface teleports now. Um, she, they like, couldn't be. She was like at the door. I mean, I think it was like five steps away, and she could have just walked yeah. out. That was like that was that was a mo- I, I this is not a point that I even thought of. This was from like another review mm-hmm. I saw, but. I think it would have been a lot scarier if instead of him just teleporting there, he, you could hear him like stomping up. I think I saw yeah. the same review because I also. I really, think I, I saw. I also like yeah. the one lady. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I saw something else from another review. I can't like I can't say that I take credit for this. No, no, me either. But another good point that they made that somebody else made was like, why or they're in the middle of nowhere. They're seven hours away from Austin and they're driving an electric car. First Which of is all, not a Tesla. <laughs> first of all. Uh, the point they made was like, how are they getting like in like, like a car charger? But then I realized like, what are they doing at a gas station at the beginning of the movie? That's a good question. I guess they're buying a cork so they can stab yeah, their face in the hand later. That <gasps> well, was a clever moment. I'm not gonna lie. That one, that, that made me so sad. <laughs> Why did it make you sad? Oh, um, because you think he's gonna do something cooler with it. You have the audacity to reference oh. The Shining and uh, and in your dumb movie. I didn't even realize. Well, it was they a Shining reference. referenced it earlier with the um him in the wall because it would follow the, his hammer 
Do you want some, like, in The Shining? Maybe. It's, <laughs> no, it's the same thing. The next one was much this. more direct. Yeah, I think the bus one where he's, like, yeah. cut it, where he cuts it through and then, like, looks through. It's, like, the same camera angles, too. Like, I guess that's, like, all right, it's a cute moment, but, like... There are a lot of... Now I want to watch There are a lot movie. of just <laughs> small th things in this movie that make me mad. Yeah, we are probably, like, nitpicking, like, too much. But, but, but it's fun to do it, so let's keep doing it. But it's fun, so, like... Overall, though, it's just, like, a fun movie. Yeah. There it's a, a stupid of, movie. They reference the original too many times. Too many times. That, like... And you'd be mm -hmm. like, oh, there's, like... About. It's not just, like, little things. Like, I'm pretty sure the chainsaw in this one is the same as the chainsaw from the original. Yeah. But it's, it's supposed cool. to be. Like, that's cool. Yeah. But, like... Then there's also moments where, like, when she was chasing her through the movie theater, uh, there was one moment, I've ca I caught this, so he kind of, like, holds the chainsaw over his head like that, yeah, and, you know, yeah, like, the original bit. poster mm -hmm. or something, yeah. Yeah. and then, but instead of, like, doing anything, like, using that, like, power, <laughs> like, the that power. motion to, like, power. kill her, yeah. he just goes, he's like, ah, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he puts it back down. But there's one last thing I yeah. want to talk about is that there's like ten minutes of this movie about some deed of some house. They're looking for one yeah. paper for like ten minutes. Yeah, that's a. It leads to nothing. No, it does. No, it leads. It, it leads to something. Because they find the paper and realize that she finds it and leaves it in the mom's room. Yeah, well, well, yeah the mom's dead. They were, just, they were just looking for the paper to realize that to like get their to teeth show back. The, that that guy and yeah. she leaves it in the room. No, it's well, fine. no. Because they, like, they, I think they were looking to make sure they couldn't find it. Because right. they, they were trying to prove that, like, they own this. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. But, the, but they there's, like, ten it. minutes about that one paper. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was just was, too much. It was kind of important, but they could have cut it down to, like, five minutes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a little... This whole, this whole movie's still and a little And Tesla, much. it's not a Tesla. It, it can't, well, that's what I, that's mm -hmm. how I'm calling it, because it's funny. It's really yeah, funny. It's, it's, a it's a Tesla. It's a Tesla. But, yeah, I mean, overall, I think we should do it, like... You know, yeah, down the road. Okay, all Concluding star. thoughts, because we're like at 30 minutes. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to say it again. At best, it's bland. At worst, it's so stupid that you just don't care anymore. It's borders on enjoyable and just dumb. Like, I like dumb, fun movies, but right. this was like dumb, fun movie. Like, you have to switch your brain off completely to actually enjoy this movie. Yeah. Because it, it, if, you, if you go into it with high expectations... It's nothing. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be a good party movie. It's a great party movie. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm about to say that. I think I wrote that in the script. Pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> I, is it my turn? Yeah, it's yeah go ahead. I'll give my thoughts. my turn. Question. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I think it's a very, like, it's a very fun movie. I had a lot of fun watching it. And, like, I enjoyed it a lot. Like, the, like my opinions on movies just in general is that... The only way, like, the way to make, like, a movie bad mm -hmm. is by making it, like, boring. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, I don't know, boring. Not, well, actually, no. Not a way to make a movie bad. But, like, the worst kind of movies are, like, the boring movies because they're just, like, not fun to watch. Because, like, even, like, because I'd say this was, like, a bad movie. But, like, it's still fun to watch. So you still, like, have a good time watching it. It's very fun. So. Yeah, it's very fun. I think overall, I'd say, like, yeah, it's a bad movie. But you're not, like. You're not coming out of it thinking like, man, I wish I didn't watch that. No, yeah. no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. You're not, you're not coming out. <laughs> it's thinking, not close like I wasted no. my time watching this. It's like a guilty pleasure. It's a very guilty pleasure. It's yeah. it's 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 good. It's good for the wrong reasons. It's good because it's not. It's really not good yeah. at all. Do you but guys also, have like a, oh, also if you're very like prone to if you're not not prone if you don't if you like, don't like gore you're gonna hate the trigger warning. Yeah, the trigger don't watch this movie. If don't watch gore. You should have watched the review. I'm not censoring the gore. Now that you're 30 minutes into this the unscripted portion <laughs> yeah so i'll grade don't it. watch it if you don't yeah. like gore honestly yeah, I, I mean i'll grade it first um see it's hard because there's i like things about it but there's a thousand things i don't like about it so yeah. i'm gonna give it just a straight c just a right. just a c just a c what about you michael Ooh. i think i'm gonna switch it up we're not letter grading it we're gonna give it what do you do is it like numbers I do it. I'll give. We'll give one. Wait, do you want? Well, no. I'm just like, how do, you, how do you rate? So you do. You do letters. You do numbers. Oh, yeah, I do yeah, X out of ten. I'll do. I'll give it a two out of five stars. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, that's still numbers. Um, Don't even, no, it's stars. It's different. It's stars. I rank it in like a star rating. So I'll do two stars out of five stars. Okay, and then, yeah, two and a half stars out of five. Stars. And then and then numbers rating. Well, we'll, two have stars. To see, we'll have to see. Well. Well, I'm out of here. That's not an exit. Now what?
Wait. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a deeply flawed horror movie, and it takes itself way too seriously for how bad it is. It started out kind of mediocre, but then it got worse and worse. Still, I loved watching it just for all the wrong reasons. This movie is hilarious because of how bad it is. If you don't mind seeing a bunch of gore in a horror movie like me, then I recommend this because it's a great movie to watch and make fun of. If you're having a bunch of friends over and you want to laugh at or make fun of a horror movie, this one's suitable. But if you're looking for a faithful sequel to the amazing first movie, or just a competent horror film, look elsewhere. I give Texas Chainsaw Massacre a 3 out of 10. A funny 3 out of 10, but a 3 out of 10 nonetheless. Hello everyone, thank you for watching the video. Thank you Brayden and Michael for filming this with me. You all know Michael from the podcast. If you haven't checked that out yet, what are you doing? I had a great time working on it, so thanks for filming it with me. Thanks again for watching. I don't really know what my next video will be, besides the Spider-Man ranking, but no other announcements. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Brennick from the Movie Fanatics, signing off.